Welcome back everyone to our Plotly series. In this video, we're gonna be building a time series visualization using the Tesla stock data. A time series, if you are unfamiliar with the term, is a series of data points that is graphed in a time order. It's a very useful tool when looking at forecasting, which is what we're gonna be focused on here in this video with the stock prices for Tesla, or for anomaly detection, monitoring events, and much more that you're gonna see highly utilized within machine learning and data science. With that being said, let's continue our adventure with Plotly and jump right back into our Jupyter Notebook. All right, so we're in episode five. We don't need these import statements. I'm going to leave them in if you're just joining us. We have used these import statements and have already previously set them up in previous videos. In the last video, just a brief mention, we also went through getting your plots online. So if you are unfamiliar with how to bring your Plotly plot online, please visit episode four. But we can leave these in for now. Towards the end, I will go through and finalize the final file so everything is more organized and clean. But we can see here, we are already familiar with the scatter plot. We are using pandas to read in our CSV. This is in a time series. A scatter plot is basically in that sequential data plotting that data in order through the Apple. This is pulling the finance charts from Apple. If you want to actually see the data, you can visit the raw data from the following link right here. We're calling the data from the data frame with our go objects of Plotly, the type of plot, our X and Y axes for the data, and we're using the Apple closing price for the Y. And we're finally plotting that with the data. We have it here for Plotly, and we have the following visualization. Now, for the purpose of our video here and for our visualization that we're going to be working on, we're going to be using the Tesla data that we can see. If we visit the following link, you can find the Tesla stock price CSV data. I will also include it in the downloadable files for this video. If we jump back into our notebook. We can start getting started. But something to think of is how would you approach this or how would you try and build this when the terms are of our visualization here is we're looking at comparing the high price and the low price of this sequential data over a given period of time. In this here, in this example, we have the Apple data. How would you do it where we would be able to look at two in this time series? Think about that and we're gonna start building our time series data with the Tesla stock prices. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here with our new time series is we're gonna actually need the data. Now I have it saved down here so we didn't have to rewrite that in. We're gonna be essentially creating a new data frame here, calling it Tesla, using pandas read CSV to grab the data that we mentioned earlier. We're gonna create that. So we could run that, we have our CSV created. We can also work from the same cell if you want. You can open a new cell since you already have that data frame created and before I asked how would you approach this, and since we're working with that time series data, essentially what we're gonna be doing to make this comparison so we can use this, we're looking to compare the two high and low prices of the dates specified over time to see how it's performing. We really would wanna be running two scatter plots, and that's essentially how we're gonna approach setting this up, is that we would be building in the time series, you're using two scatter plots together to evaluate how the stock price is performing. So as we've done, Earlier in our graphs, we will be setting up the Plotly visualization. We would have to be setting up the trace. Now we can call this one, let's go with trace one. We can set it equal to go dot scatter. Type of plot that we're using. We need to open this. And I'm gonna bring this over just to keep it a little organized. We need to set our X equal to Tesla. We're using the date specified from Tesla. And we also need to set our Y, this as well, equal to the Tesla. We're gonna be grabbing the data from the high, and we'll get to that in a second. I'll pull up that file. After we have the Y set, we need to give a name. We also need to give a color option and opacity, as we've seen these as well before. So we need to do the name equal to Let's give it the Tesla high price since we are visualizing the high price here for the data. Let's give it a color line equal open parentheses so we can specify the color. This is a hash value of the color. 
17 B E C F. Now this is a color example that Plotly had in one of the visualizations. It actually is pretty nice in my opinion for the time series. So we're going to continue using that one. And finally, just to specify the opacity equals 0 0.8. That will finalize this. The only thing we would have to do now, again, working with two different scatter plots here in the same visualization is to build another scatter plot. For the purpose of saving time and for programmers, we're always looking to keep things easy, keep things simple. What can we do here to build another scatter plot working with the same data? We can actually just grab this. Now you can create one if you want as well. We'll create the trace, I want to call it second, I want to call it trace two. Now we're using the scatter go x set to our Tesla date. But the difference here is we're actually looking to plot the different data values. We want to see the low. We're looking to compare the high price and the low price. So we'll set this as low. We want to give it the name as Tesla low. And we are going to change the color. We don't want to keep the same colors because that would be confusing for the visualization. Let's give it the following color as 7F, 7F, 7F. That might sound a little confusing. Keep the opacity the same. Now let's actually jump and take a look at the data real quick. Since we're working with the highs and lows, you can also work if you want to compare the opening price and closing price as well on the specified dates. We're just looking at the peak performance. So the high and low prices of the data, you have the following columns. If you open up the raw data, this is what it's going to look like. So you have, and you'll be working with the following columns that you can also build into your visualizations to test and try out just a great way of learning more with Plotly. Let's jump back into our Jupyter notebook. We have to wrap this up. We'll use data if we want to plot this using data. Since we have the two visualizations here, the two scatter plots, we need to build them in to the following, which we'll be using for data, the trace underscore one comma trace underscore two. Give that some, some space and we can work on actually plotting it now. So we can move on to building the layout. But one thing we want to do very quickly here is we actually need equal sign. Can't forget that because we need to set our data equal to trace one and trace two to have that built in. So let's give it a title for our visualization. So we'd be working with the layout structure within Plotly. This is customizing it to bring up that dict structure. And we just need to set a title. Let's set our title equal to I'm going to give mine the title, the Tesla stock price. Uh, high versus low. All right, we can close that that parenthesis. And finally, we would need our figure and our I plot our figure, which is essentially we're building our figure here equal to the data. So it would be equal to the dict our data, we want a parenthesis here, our data equal to data, remember, data equals trace one and trace two to have that and our layout pretty straightforward equal to layout. We have that here, if you have your API key and username built in from the previous video, you can use the pi dot I plot if you want to bring it online. But for the purpose of this, since we're working in Jupiter, let's just use the I plot and we can finally use the figure. So that's what we want to build here. And if you're bringing it online, always a great idea to give it a file name. I'm going to give it file name as Tesla stock comparison. All right. And we can run it. Oh, we have one great thing about Python gives us we have a name error. We can't keep that spelled incorrectly. We can see line six. It is not spelled like that. So we want to spell it correctly. Remember, we grab this. So this will be spelled incorrectly as well. We want it spelled right as Tesla. Now let's run it again. And there you have it. We can see our Tesla stock price. We have our highs with the following color and our low of the stock price. It's a great tool, again, for the financial fields for quantitative modeling. If you're looking at any kind of stock data or really a time series, so any kind of data over a specific set of time to make these comparisons or visualizations, a great tool to have. Now, we can see here covering of the Tesla stock price are highs and lows. So you might be able to infer some information from this visualization. If you want to test it out, you can always use the other data columns within the Tesla data, remember the opening and closing prices, you can even try and grab other data sets 
and try to build the visualizations or bring the data into the time series. A great tool to have in your arsenal for data science and machine learning. And on a final note, you can create, let's say we have our X axis here. I mean, is it a little spaced out or at least we might sometimes want to space it in a different format. We have these dates built in here. You could always create another dict structure with the X axis in the layout. But if you click on the export to Plotly, it's going to open up a page that should look like this. And this is a great benefit of using Plotly. It gives you this sense of working with this dashboard where you can go into all of these parts of the Plotly structure. You have the traces, subplots, style, themes, etc. here, and you can always save it and share it. But what we can also do if we go into style, you can go into the axes. And you could specify some customizations over here with the range. We're going to keep it categorical. But if you select the custom option, you can also work with the range of the X axis. Let's just test some values out here. You can also always zoom in if we're working with Plotly again. But these are just other enhancements that you can use. And it's very useful with these tools. We also have our data specified here to show you what you're working with. This dashboard just comes in very handy when working with Plotly. So don't be afraid to export it with the option from the visualization. If we can click on export to Plotly, it's going to open up a visualization similar to this since we just built in these customizations and you have all of these options to work with and customize further. If you're preparing for a presentation and you want to select or hone in on specific data, it can come in very handy. And with that, we're going to wrap things up here. As always, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, about Plotly, please feel free to share them. Having the ability to build a time series, again, is a very powerful tool, comes in extremely useful if you're looking to monitor logs, if you're looking to really analyze data over specific sets of time. You will see the time series come up very often. In the next video, we're gonna be working with one of my favorite types of visualizations, so stay tuned to see what that is please subscribe to the super data science channel. It's a fantastic way to stay up to date on what's going on within the industry. And I will see you in the next video.